Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library, and today I have a great guest on, Matt from Guru. Now, the way I met Matt was actually through LinkedIn and creating content, because one of the things that I think is a huge, huge win for any business is being able to creatively use content to tell your story and to develop your brand. So I'm excited to have Matt on the show, so definitely stay tuned. So let me bring on my guest. But before I bring on the guest, I know a lot of people have been asking about, hey, you really love the show. We've done, what, 480 plus episodes in the last 19 months. And you guys have been asking me to, you know, set up some so you guys can donate and give because you love the show. So if you want to, you can go over to the Patreon page to do that. But we're going to get right into the interview. So let me bring on Matt. Matt, welcome to the show, man. How are you? I'm doing great, Charles. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. It is a pleasure to connect. Um, you know, we, we, we connected, we talked a little bit at the Grow Summit, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal event for entrepreneurs of, of, of every stage. I mean, that, that was a phenomenal event. So thank you so much for having me. And um, how has it been since the Grow Summit on your end? Well, it's been great because I can actually focus on my core business instead of um, running an event. So the growth summit's one of those things I like to, I I call it um, boomerang delegation. Like we gave the event away to somebody else and then it eventually came back to our business anyway. So it kind of boomerang back to us. And and this was the first year it kind of landed back in our lap and we had a lot more involvement, but it was a tremendous success. People had a great time, enjoyed your content, sharing how to grow your business through content. So yeah, uh, feedback was outstanding, touched a lot of lives, people learned a lot, a lot of connections made. So it was a great event. Awesome, man. I love it. I love it. We'll come back to that. But, you know, first, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about, you know, your background to help the audience understand, you know, the Matt story. So (laughs) tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so I I won't take you too deep into the Matt story that that takes too long. But but about Geez, 10, 12 years ago now, I was I, I was working for a Fortune 500 company in the payroll and human resources outsourcing space. And I'll never forget, I, I called up to our regional office and I said, hey, can I get a couple hundred bucks to sponsor a local fo- nonprofit? They're having a 5K. Be a great opportunity for us to put the logo on the back of the shirt. We can go out and volunteer. We can get more involved in the community. We can start to get more plugged in. We had a small satellite office here. So about 10 of us, we weren't super engaged. We weren't as, you know, kind of involved with our clients' worlds as we would have liked to have been. And they said, you know what, Matt, we just can't sponsor every 5K in America. We'll go broke. You know, we're worried about shareholder value. We can't go out and be a part of every one of these little things. And so I said, that's great for you. That's not great for me personally and where I see my family going as it uh, comes to being involved in the community here in Columbia, South Carolina. And then it also just kind of was on the heels of, you know, I continually heard our clients saying there was almost like this Goldilocks thing, right? Like either we had more technology than they needed or not enough technology than they needed. When it came to the HR support side, there was, you know, too much support or not enough support. There was never the right fit. There was this really this need for small businesses to have an outsourced HR solution with easy to use software combined with HR expertise and people who are actually going to do some of the work for you, um, where we just found this little niche that we, a lot of businesses, 10 to 49 employees really need support on the human resources side. And they want to be able to you know, press that easy button and get help. And so that's what we've been able to do over the last seven years. We started Guru back in 2014 and, and have helped hundreds of small businesses ever since to, to simplify their HR processes. Wow, that is amazing. I mean, and, you know, for I talk to a lot of business owners. HR is one of those areas where no one tends to actually understand it when they're starting a business. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm curious, have you seen that with, like I said, a lot of the businesses that you've been helping in the HR area that like most of them, like they may know their craft or what they do, but HR is just like this area that they're just like, hey, we, we, we're just trying to put bodies in to get work done. <laughs> Right. Well, it's it's compounding debt, right? So it's, you know, you're doing some things wrong with those first one, two, three hires, and then you start adding more people and those things you're doing wrong now are creating this level of liability that you realize, okay, hey, there, this 
liability I know that, you know, whether I'm not doing new hire paperwork properly, not storing it properly, maybe not even getting all the right forms and, and putting all the right information where it needs to be. But then there's the fear of the unknown. So the number one thing that our clients say to us is we don't know what we don't know. And we're starting to get scared, right? We've got 10, 15, 20 employees, and we realize there's no in-house HR expertise and we're not big enough to hire an HR person yet, right? It's a lot like your CFO services where, you know, it's, you're going to be, you're going to have some needs for HR expertise and finance expertise when you've got 15 employees, but you can't go out and hire a VP of HR, a full-time HR person at that size. It just doesn't make sense. And so that's where we plug that need are those growing companies that don't know what they don't know and are looking for guidance and expertise that they can put out in a simple fashion, right? Like that's the, the challenge is people want to overcomplicate things. We just want to simplify it. One of our core values is to be like the duck. So whenever you see a duck swimming on water, like you just see a duck elegantly gliding across the top of the water where underneath the water, they're paddling like hell, right? And so like, we want to do the paddling like hell on our end so that you can just, you know, get the answers, the beautiful duck just swimming across the top of the water. Nice, nice. I love it. Now, I guess with all of the things going on, I mean, with through, you know, 2020 and 2021 of people trying to navigate, you know, you know, employees working remotely, trying to navigate, do we go back into the office, you know, getting whether employees need to be vaccinated or not? I mean, have you seen a lot more people reach out for HR support as like all of these unknowns that we've all been stepping into? Yeah, we've been busier than ever. And that's, you know, I kind of joked that when the FFCRA came down and some of the mandates started to come out related to COVID, this was like our Super Bowl. It was time to step up. It was time to provide ultimate value for our clients, for people that aren't our clients as well. We kind of stuck our flag in the ground at the beginning of this thing and said, hey, we're going to everything that we're providing to our clients, we're going to provide to everybody. And so you talked about content at the onset of this, where it was like the things that we normally would have reserved for our clients only, we were saying, all right, give it all away. Because if we can help businesses navigate this tumultuous time, I mean, obviously reciprocity will return at some point. And we weren't really worried about that though, because the content's already created, the information's already created, the guidance is already there. So what does it help or hurt anyone if we just hoard that for our clients only? Why not give it all away? And so it's been a great opportunity for us to help small businesses to navigate a really uncertain time, uncertain time for us as well, right? I mean, that's that's probably one of our biggest advantages is that we are the same size as most of our clients and we deal with the same challenges every day. I often, you know, I often tell clients, hey, this is how I use the service. Um, because I'm a customer and not only am I the hair club president, I'm also a client. So the, uh, you know, we're, we're able to, to talk to them in a way that makes sense, but, but yeah, it's been a really interesting time and it's been a great opportunity for us to just continue to provide value to our clients and, and we're busier than ever, which is a great problem to have. Nice. Nice. Now you mentioned, you know, about the content and I want to go a little bit further into that one. Now, you know, with, when it comes down to content and really sharing that, like I said, that value, what you were sharing with your clients to now, it's like, hey, let's just share it with everybody. Was there a little apprehension from your team when you came up with that idea? No, not from the team. I think that there's just this, you know, we generally are selfish people, right? That's kind of how we're born, mine, mine, mine. And, and so there's a little bit of reluctance. The only thing that I can say is, you always have this in the back of your head where your clients might think, well, I thought that's what I pay you for. If you're just going to give it away for free, what do I need your service for? But it's kind of the equivalent of like putting all your recipes online if you're a, if you're a great restaurant. Like, sure, people can try to cook it at home, but it's not going to be the same as if they come in and have that experience with you and you're actually cooking it for them and you've coming to their table and serving them. It's very similar in our environment. We'll give away all the templates, all the guides, all the information, all the everything we can. But ultimately, at the end of the day, somebody's still got to do the work, right? And that's that's where we come in and we provide the values. We say, hey, look, we can implement these things for you and take this all off your plate because HR is one of these things where there's a tremendous amount of liability tied to it, um, but there's not a whole lot of reward in doing some of these things right, right? Like the blocking and tackling of <laughs> HR, like if you get all the paperwork right, nobody's like slapping you high fives or you know telling you a great job. That's just an expectation. But if you get it wrong, you know you're looking at $1,100 penalty per I-9 that's improperly stored and filed. You know, there's all sorts of things that that could go wrong in the HR world, but but not a lot of rewards when they're going right until you start to get into uh, you know engagement, retention, growth of your people, and that more strategic HR component. 
Gotcha. You know, that's interesting. I mean, as you say that about, you know, there aren't a lot of upsides for like, hey, when you get this right. Um, but there are a lot of risk if you get it wrong. And from what I've seen from different businesses that have some of what of the a, a similar situation, um, when it comes down to their marketing and their content, they tend to fall very heavy on the doom and gloom of if you don't call us today, you're going to, you know, you're going to get sued or, you know, you're, how do you balance, you know, like I said, the reality that, Hey, there isn't a whole lot of upside, but there are a lot of risks without like just trying to scare potential clients to death to come to you. Yeah. It's funny because that was a technique that I actually used to teach us back in the fortune 500 world is to create <laughs> Your uncertainty and doubt. And it always drove me crazy because it's just like, come on, man, like you're manipulating people into thinking, you know, giving them this false sense of fear around something that may or may not be a concern. And, and so that's not how we want to sell or to, to bring people into our services. We want to educate and provide people with the resources they need. Once again, if I give you a recipe and you cook it at home and you're comfortable and you love the way it comes out when you do it, awesome. You're still going to remember where you got the recipe from, right? Like, it's not like you forgot the restaurant that shared that great recipe with you, but if we can cook it for you and that's going to deliver more value and you find that, that that's worth paying for, then that's also great. Right. But the last thing that we're going to do is try to create these false pretenses that make you concerned about things you don't need to be concerned about. And once you get past, we talk a lot about mastering the basics. Once you get those basics down, if you're somebody who's got a high level of attention to detail, good processes, you're willing to, you know, keep up to date and change things as they need, then you know, maybe you don't need a service like ours. And that's totally fine too. We're not for everybody. But at the same time, like the last thing I'm going to do is, oh, Terrell, goodness, you know, if you guys don't do that right, it could cost you all this money. And you're, oh, what are the chances you're, you know, let's talk about the reality of how this could bite you and what that would play out like if, you know, if things were to go wrong and measure your risk and reward on that equation. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, I, I love it because I was talking to um, someone recently because I, I did some videos about, you know, the reality of it is, is that there are some people out there that you don't need my services. Like here's what, if you want to do it yourself, here are some things for you to keep in mind. And, you know, I got into this debate with, well, I, it really wasn't a debate. It's just their disagreement with my strategy was like, well, if you're giving away all of this, like, you know, how are you going to make any money? And and like, like you said, I, I really love the thought of, hey, it's the reciprocity of like, hey, if a person is willing to be able to do it on their own, maybe they don't need my services at all. I'm not the right, you know, that's not the right customer for us. So as you start to think about, you know, like your right customers, you know, who would, how would you describe, like said, some of the ideal customers that you guys really solve great problems for? Yeah, if I were to niche it way down, I'd say employers with 10 to 30 employees in professional service types of environments have a high level of value on their team. They believe that their employees are their number one asset and they tend to be more in professional service types. Uh, you know, we work a lot with legal, a lot of tech, a lot of uh, financial services firms. And that's just because they tend to have that mindset, right? They understand their service-based companies. They know they've got to attract, retain, and grow their number one asset, their people. And so we tend to, the, the mindset's there. They value us. They treat us as an extension of their team and vice versa. And, you know, we're not a vendor, right? So if you're looking for a vendor or, a, you know, a system that's the lowest cost system and you don't really care about your people like that's just not going to jive and and that's not the type of industries or people we serve and it's it's not like there's not you know i always use i always pick on restaurants and and some of the more blue collar stuff and it's not like there's not strategic restaurants out there that don't view their employees as their number one asset and they're not you know more savvy than others but it's just generally speaking we tend to talk uh work fast with white collar industries and work with folks that are really focused on also growth is a big thing um, companies that are stagnant tend not to really uh, rely on our, our particularly our, our outsourced HR uh, types of services. And I've said recently our, our, our new normal client is this 10 to 15 employee group that's in six different states. Um, and, you know, so they're trying to navigate all the nuance of having a remote team 
that is you spread across the country and then they quickly realize like, oh crap, we got to file and pay taxes in every one of these states that we're doing payroll. And oh, the new hire packet, you know, just help somebody with a resignation on Friday from somebody in California, their only employee in California, which adds like 15 bullets to how we handle the resignation process versus how we would handle a resignation in South Carolina. So just having somebody that can help you to navigate that and make that quick call of going, hey, we got to let so-and-so go in New Jersey. How is that different? What do we need to do? Can you guys help us get that taken care of? So uh, those are the folks in, in this new normal of, of hybrid or if not fully remote teams that have become more of our, our, our perfect client. Nice. I love it. I love it. So if people are interested in like, hey, I really need some, you know, I really need some help in the HR area. How do they find you guys online? Yeah, you can go to our website. It's G U H R O O dot C O. That's guru with an H R in the middle dot co. Um, when you land there, you, one of the things you'll notice immediately is that we serve both small businesses and other payroll companies. So we do a lot of back office support for other payroll and HR outsourcing companies around the country. Um, so if you're a small business owner, you can just click through there on the small business side and, and learn more about. We have everything from online, simple online payroll. If you're with the ADPs, the paychecks, the the big shops of the world, and you're tired of being another number, tired of waiting in line for 45 minutes on hold, uh, we've got the right solutions for you there. If you're somebody who's growing and fits some of those other things that we talked about on the human resources side, you're looking to layer in some expertise and even some benefits. So we recently launched um, our HR, HR concierge platform, which includes uh, benefits, uh, full health care, ancillary, everything. We actually lump small groups together to create one big group to buy down the cost of healthcare so that we can beat the open market, not only on your rates up front, but also on your renewals going forward to drive costs down over time. So really excited about that. We've had great early adoption of that service. Nice, nice. I love it. I love it. So, you know, with all of the great things going on with Guru, and I mean, you're, you're, you're leading an awesome team there, you're growing, you're helping the clients. So where do you find time for GrowCo and the Grow Summit? So, <laughs> you know, how do you find time with that? Well, so the, I, I've, somebody asked me that once a couple of years ago, I was like, you make time for the things that you care about, right? And I care about the community that I live in. I care about creating the type of environment where entrepreneurs can succeed. I create about, I care about helping others to, to fill needs in their business. And so, you know, we started a nonprofit here in Columbia called GroCo that Terrell referenced it. And our mission or vision is to help 10X the number of Inc. 5,000 companies in the Midlands of South Carolina. And, you know, in order to do that, we're providing resources in the form of mentoring in the form of events like the growth summit that you mentioned which is you know quickly on its way to becoming the premier entrepreneurship event for the east coast and and soon the us um and these are the types of things that entrepreneurs need they need to learn from each other they need to collide they need to to interact and engage with one another they need to share resources share the wins and losses man like it's so important to know that other people are struggling with the same things you're struggling with uh, if you're out on an island growing your business, it's very lonely. So, so we're trying to create those types of environments where people can connect, get together, learn from one another. It's very selfish in the respect that like it wasn't here and I needed it. So I said, all right, let's go ahead and let's start it. And that's kind of like my MO, right? If it's not there and I need it, then I'll either have, you know try to find somebody to partner with on it or, or start it myself and try to make it happen. And so we've been very blessed and fortunate to, to grow that group to, to dozens of members now, uh, high growth, high impact co companies in the area that are all looking to learn from each other and get better and, and create massive impact in the region. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And I can attest, I mean, I, I was at the Growth Summit you know, this year and phenomenal event. I think, you know, I said it was like 300 plus, you know, business owners, entrepreneurs in the room, all learning from each other, meeting, mingling. I mean, and it, it was definitely a great event. Surprised that there was so much positive feedback coming in. So definitely keep up the great work. Thanks. Now, one of the things that I also wanted to talk about, because you mentioned your content, where can people actually find the content um, that you guys put out there to really help businesses? Yeah, one of the easiest ways just to follow or connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, if you look at my last name is V-A-A-D-I. If you search for Matt Vady, I am not a hard person to find on the internet. There are not many people with that last name in America that are putting themselves out there. So, um, 
that that's the easiest place i post a lot on linkedin share a lot of the content obviously like most good folks that are doing content marketing we're repurposing it across multiple platforms but that that tends to be our our most vocal place um and then you know when appropriate it'll drive you to to the website or wherever but um yeah we we try our best to to really think value first and so is this something that's valuable? We don't come out to talk just to talk. We want to share updates and information. You know, a big series that we're focused on right now is remote work and leading, hiring, leading, managing remote teams. It's such a struggle for so many of us right now. And there's so many folks out there that are, are kind of sharing about it that, that aren't living it, right? So we're living it. We're, we're kind of vulnerable, sharing what's working, what's not working, what changes we made over the last, you know, We've been doing remote work for the last seven years, so um, you know it's not new to us. We're we're not new to the party, but but that's a big topic that we're sharing a ton of great content on, and it, it's in the trenches stuff, not just philosophical. Awesome, I love it. I love it. Well, before we wrap up, one question that I love asking every guest that comes on. I mean, when you think about you know the journey of where you've been, and you think about where you are, kind of in your own business journey, and just the uh, the businesses that you've interacted with. What's two pieces of advice that you would share with other business owners? Yeah, first and foremost, like the difference between an A player and a B player or a C player for that matter is so astronomically large that you need to make sure that you are diligent and you have a set hiring process and you are taking your time, you know, the old adage of hire slow, fire fast. When you're a small business, you don't have a choice but to take your sweet time. It is so much better to get the right person than just a warm body to fill a seat. And you will see that once you start to get some A's on your team, right? In the early days, you might not be able to afford the A players that you want, but you got to keep rolling up and doing your best to, to fill the seats with as many A players as humanly possible. And so be selective. Um, and secondarily, this is a piece of advice that I wish I could follow. I give it to everybody and it's just not my personality, but niche down, niche down again, niche down one more time until it just absolutely hurts, right? Like the one thing I tell people all the time is like, if, if I could have started the business over instead of being, you know, we started our, our name was ERG payroll and HR, but we offered a lot of the, all the same stuff we offer today after seven years from day one. And if I was smart, we would have been dentalpayroll.com. We would have offered payroll <laughs> to Dennis and that's it. Like one product to one market and run as hard and fast after that vertical as humanly possible. And we would have run, we'd still be going. We wouldn't have run out of, there are more dental practices in America than we could ever sell to. And so, but it's interesting that we have that scarcity mindset when we think about niching down, have the abundance mindset, go after a niche and really make a name for yourself in one area before you worry about expanding and expanding and expanding. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, Matt, thank you so much for being an amazing guest on the show. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, Terrell. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like our content, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want to see more of our exclusive content, you can subscribe and become a member on patreon.com forward slash business talk library. Hey, the Business Talk Library is the place where business makes sense.